Well, while the FBI has been busy raiding the president's lawyer's office to find Stormy Daniels documents, our next guest is spearheading the effort to find out why the Department of Justice opened the Russian collusion probe in the first place. Surprise, surprise, the DOJ won't give us straight answers. Joining me now exclusively, House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunez, a Republican from California. Uh, Congressman Nunez, thanks for being on tonight. It's great to be here. Uh, you've been trying to get documents for as long as I, well, I've been doing the show. Uh, and it's my lot in life. Yeah, exactly. That's all you do is try to get documents. Every day trying to get documents from And, from and, and people have been asking, why is it that you haven't yet held anyone in contempt of Congress. That's a big deal to do that. You know, Eric Holder was held in contempt of Congress, as mm -hmm. I recall, over the Fast and Furious documents. Um, but w what gives here? And what, well, because what do you we've still been in need? a situation where it's trickle-down documents. So we issued the subpoena in August. We walked through piece by piece. Every time we get a little bit more, as you know, we had to get out the major information, which was the information on the warrant against Carter Page, who yep. was a Trump associate. So since that time, we've been investigating the State Department, and we have a, especially have an interest in this electronic communication. EC. I've never so, heard of the EC, which is the document that establishes the justification, correct, for ultimately naming the special counsel. This whole no, thing no, no, that no, ended no. up in the... Not the special counsel. The ca open the counterintelligence investigation. Open the counterintel open investigation in initially that ultimately led to the special counsel. Yeah, so it's a two-page document. Uh, I sent uh, Chairman Gowdy over there to see it originally. It was fully redacted, so they couldn't read anything. I called back several times, had conversations with Rod Rosenstein and with Director Ray, the FBI director. Mr. Gowdy and the investigators went over there again, and there was only a few more things that were unredacted, so most of it was still redacted. So now we're at this point again, we're at a boiling point where we need this, what is only a two-page document. It's only a two-page, it's less than two pages from what I understand. And you know, if, if the record wasn't that every time they hide something from us, that then we find out it was really bad and they hid it from us for a long like time. Like the Judge Contrera issue. Like the, like the text, like the struck, FISA, struck the page. Struck page, the warrants, yeah. the, the warrant they got on Carter So the trickle-down information, unredacted, and you're like, oh, no, that's why you were dead. <laughs> Yeah, so now, just the fact that they're not yeah. giving this to us tells me there's something wrong here. Well, Bob Costa, Robert Costa from The Washington Post is, uh, is speculating tonight on Twitter that you are on the verge of moving to hold Christopher Wray and Rod Rosenstein in contempt of Congress. And you have a deadline of tomorrow, apparently, to get this information. Is this well, a I real can, possibility I, I tonight? I can tell you this. We are going to get the document. We are going to get the two pages. So they can either cough them up now or it will get really complicated starting tomorrow night and we'll have to take all the steps necessary in order to get the documents. What do you what are you thinking might be in this document? I mean, is, are you going to intent, intent well, we the have a, an, an early well, insurance the, policy if Trump was here, actually the uh, nominee or the or the ultimate victor? Well, well, here's our challenge with this. So if you believe what's in The New York Times and Washington Post, so sometimes they actually do get leaked information. So getting a lot in, lately in yeah. that leaked information uh, that came out in December, December 30th, I think of this year was the information on an Australian diplomat talking to Mr. Papadopoulos. That's what they say is in the EC, but we haven't been able to see the EC to confirm that. So it's somehow the New York Times has it. Hmm. The American people have read it, but the U.S. Congress does not have that information. And we, we deserve we have the full right to that information. Are you disturbed by some of these leaks that seem to be emanating from the special counsel's office or from uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office, Southern District of New York, about the 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 uh, intent of what the, that uh, raid on the Cohen office was, what they were really looking for, what they were, uh, what they're speculating? It seems like a lot of information came out yesterday, last 24 hours. Well, the hours. bigger problem I have about the leaks, and I'll say this for the 100th time, uh, the special counsel, I would have thought, would have got to the felony leaks of General Flynn's name being leaked to the press with very, yeah. very high-level information. And so it seems like the special counsel is good at leaking, but not so good at actually finding major felony leakers. Uh, what are the chances you're going to hold them in contempt of Congress right now? Uh, well, I can 10. just tell you that we're, we're not going to just hold in contempt. Uh, we will have a plan to hold in contempt and to impeach. To impeach Christopher Ray? Absolutely. Rod Rosenstein. We're not, we're not messing around here. They're going to give these two. They're going to say you're just documents. Trump's lackey here. You're doing Trump's bidding. That's what the Democrats, they've been demonizing you from the beginning. I've been the subject of some demonization myself, so I know how it goes. But 
they're going to demonize you and say, oh, you're just going to run over the White House, help Trump out every time you, uh, he needs, he's in a jam. Yeah, well, as I said before, whenever I see evidence of Russian collusion, I'll be the first person standing out there on the steps of the Capitol that I found the Russian collusion with the Trump campaign. I haven't found it yet, but I found a whole lot of other stuff that always puts DOJ and FBI in a bad light, unfortunately. Uh, the media, uh, the other, other media channels are salivating tonight in a frothy frenzy over, once again, Trump's going to fire Robert Mueller. Trump's going to fire Robert Mueller. Huckabee Sanders was asked about this today. This is what she said. Rod Rosenstein oversees special counsel, and only he has the power to fire the special counsel. Uh, again, we've been advised that the president uh, certainly has the power to make that decision. Uh, I don't think there's any sign that Trump's really going to th fire uh, Mueller, but, you know, Republicans are freaking out about that as well. But yeah, he I mean, look, keeping this thing going. Yeah, it's... He they, clearly has they, the authority. They said this before. Yeah. They, he was firing all kinds of people, and none of that ever came to fruition. Uh, Preet Bharara, the former U.S. attorney, Southern District of New York. He did get fired. Uh, he did get fired by uh, President Trump. Still very angry about this. This is what he said today. The regulation is very clear with respect to the special counsel. It says the special counsel may be disciplined or removed from office only by the personal action of the attorney general. And he may remove the, the special counsel for a number of enumerated reasons, including misconduct, dereliction of duty, dereliction of duty, incapacity, and some other things, and has to provide those reasons in writing. So it's very clear that if the president of the United States called under the current circumstances, and as long as these regulations are in effect, called up Bob Mueller and said, I'm firing you, Bob Mueller, I would expect would not heed that. Apparently, the regulations trump the Constitution. Uh, we have an executive branch, judicial branch, legislative branch. In which branch does Bob Mueller reside? The executive branch. He doesn't reside in the I mean, he, yeah, who's yeah. the head? Of, I mean, again, I think it would not be smart at all for the president to fire Bob Mueller. I, I do not think it makes sense. As tempting as it may be, I don't think it makes sense. But the idea that he doesn't have the constitutional authority to do that, whether it's politically smart, I mean, and Preet Barrow was U.S. attorney. I, do, will you have any reaction to that? Well, it shows you how this is how far we've gone down over the last uh, eight or nine years, where the courts have become activist courts, activist judges. Uh, the fact that DOJ and FBI think that they're above the law. So Congress, the legislative branch, we created these agencies, and they have a responsibility to give us documents when we ask for them. We have the appropriate clearances. That's why the House Intelligence Committee exists. So... Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to win on this. And it's just a matter of how tough they're going to make it for Congress to actually do our job that w under the Constitution, the, the priorities that we're given. What, what, to hold someone in contempt of Congress, I don't know the, the process. You're the head, head of the uh, Intel Committee. Do you need to have sign off from others in the Intel Committee? Get a well, there's a lot of the different ways you could do it. Uh, really what, quick. What, what we're doing now is that, well, ultimately, the yeah. Congress has to vote on it. Okay. So How's that for quick? Yeah, well, do you think, what's the chances of that? Well, I don't think we're going to have to get there because I think they're going to give us the documents. We are going to follow this and we're going to check up on it tomorrow. April 11th is the deadline, so tomorrow. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Congressman. Thank you.